The OGs Are Falling is a series presented by myself, Ramon Mundo Mendoza. The following episode covers the criminal life and death of Chavo Perez from Bakersfield. On Wednesday, June 19, 2019, at approximately 8 o'clock p.m., longtime Mexican Mafia OG Raymond Chavo Perez was found dead in his cell from an apparent heart attack at CSP Sacramento, formerly known as New Folsom Prison. Just prior to his death, Chavo had been complaining of a tingling sensation in his face and was experiencing physical issues due to his history with drug use. It was common speculation among CDCR gang officers that Chavo's longtime love affair with heroin would ultimately lead to his death. According to one institutional gang investigator, also known as IGIs, Chavo had previously died several times. Following multiple massive heroin overdoses in prison, he was administered Narcan, an injected medication that reverses drug overdoses. Chavo was brought back to life to continue his life of drug use while behind bars. In case no one has received the news flash, drugs are extremely prevalent inside the prison system, especially for the organized prison gangs. Chavo was another in a long line of MM members who was state raised by the California Youth Authority and the California Department of Corrections. In 1971, he was one of the Mexican Mafia's young guns who was recruited at DVI by fellow street homie and first wave Mexican Mafia member Richard Richie Reese from Bakersfield. Chavo and 10 other Emic Arnales were voted into the organization in what is historically considered the largest collective number of new recruits brought in at one time. When Chavo arrived from DVI to San Quentin in 1971, he became my cell partner in the East Block and we were like two peas in a pod. From participating in many inmate assaults, some fatal and some not, to conducting prison black market drug and extortion business, we became close friends. He even fixed me up with his younger sister as a pen pal. A female gang member from Bakersfield, Gloria Perez and I corresponded for several years. She looked up to her older brothers, Louis and Chavo, and had an older sister, Bonnie Reina Perez, who served time at CIW, the California Institution for Women. I was like a big brother or uncle, and she readily inherited and accepted Chavos Carnales as family, which is essentially the way it worked in the criminal world. She went by the nickname Cyclona, and in a few years, she would live up to her moniker. On one occasion, Chavo and I experimented with LSD, and we literally saw the walls of our San Quentin cell breathing heavily as we sat on the bottom bunk, mesmerized and experiencing our acid hallucinations. Chavo became somewhat alarmed and thought the walls were closing in on him, and I brought him out of his bad trip by convincing him they, the walls, were just trying to get a better look at him. I kept repeating to Chavo that the walls were our friends. Son camaradas is what I assured him in Spanish. In English, it meant they are your friends. I don't think he ever messed with this unpredictable drug after this experience, and we joked about it for many years to come. Like most Mexican Mafia members, Chavo was in love with heroin and was constantly on the hunt for the dragon, a code name we affectionately assign to the all-consuming deadly drug of choice for the carnales, many lost hope to die heroin addicts on the outside, and multitudes of convicts inside the prison system. Somehow, and don't ask me how I dodged that bullet in life, 
I succeeded in forsaking the lure and temptation of the heroine's seduction, and I became known as a non-user. My explanation was simple and honest. I preferred making money over polluting my body with poison. The obsession with the dragon would prove to be the ultimate downfall for many in the Mexican Mafia. In fact, many of the Nuestra Familia members suffered from the same addiction and obsession. When I heard the NF had come up with a rule making heroin use an, an offense punishable by death, my immediate thought was, good luck with that one. I believe it is in the Mexican-American gang members' DNA to crave drugs, especially heroin. If there is a demon assigned to our young men and women in the Chicano gang world, he is alive and devouring everyone and anything in his path. This is probably why we refer to heroin as the dragon, a very appropriate title for this destroyer of lives. A serious piece of advice to parents. Don't let your kids grow up to be tecatos, heroin addicts. To you gangsters who choose to live the life, don't pass this sick inheritance on to your kids. After several years of corresponding with Chavo's sister, I had the opportunity to meet Cyclona upon my release from prison in 1975. Like the loyal younger gangster sister I never had, my first request to her was an assignment to locate several desired targets living in her Bakersfield hometown. They included one, two Nuestra Familia brothers, Woodsy and Ronnie Reyes, two, Chalo Hernandez, the founder of the NF, and three, Ralph Pata Garcia, a Mexican Mafia dropout. Sometime in late September, she reported having successfully located the Reyes brothers. Not only was Cyclona invaluable in locating two of these targets, she also volunteered and maneuvered herself into getting the front door open. She accurately explained that one of the Reyes brothers, Ronnie, had the hots for her. On the morning of October 9, 1975, it was Ronnie who answered his front door and let her in. Two of us followed her inside the house. After executing both men, stabbing Ronnie Reyes and shooting his brother Woodsy, my crime partner, Sailor Boy, allowed Cyclona the honor of firing the final bullet into the dying body of Woodsy Reyes. Sailor Boy later suggested we take out or murder Cyclona, thereby eliminating the only eyewitness to these hits. But I interceded on her behalf and reminded him this was Chavo's sister, not just some expendable woman. In our predominantly male-dominated exclusive circle, Chavo's little sister was probably the deadliest woman I ever met. In the end, her life was spared. I am very happy to learn and report that she became a born-again Christian sometime later in her life before passing away on March 30th, 2001. On January 31st, 1976, Evarito Blanco, also known as Blanco from Chiques, was taken for a ride through South Los Angeles. Sandwiched in the back seat between Chavo Perez and Mongo Silva from Florencia 13, they drove to a pre-designated area while talking business along the way. As they pulled up to a secluded parking lot, Chavo and Mongo suddenly yanked his arms in opposite directions. The driver looked straight ahead as Gator from Florencia 13 fired four rounds into Blanco's head from the passenger front seat, killing him instantly. Chavo and Mongol then took turns, systematically stabbing Blanco's lifeless body and spitting on him as they administered their personal brand of Emma justice. The hit was sanctioned from Folsom because Blanco failed to murder an inmate at Soledad Prison who was a Mexican Mafia target. 
Chavo Perez was a Mexican Mafia member for 48 years. And you could say he served his fellow carnal as well until the end. He also wasted approximately 50 years of his life behind bars. Career criminals like Chavo are institutionalized and programmed for the long haul in prison. They are indeed more comfortable on the inside than out on the streets. Two days shy of his 69th birthday, Chavo's time was up and his number was called. It was time for him to leave this earth. May the Lord have mercy on your soul.